Can somebody quickly write in the chat box whether the audio is coming clearly? Okay. Oh, the chat is disabled, says Amit. Okay, let me just quickly check. All right. Uh, can I get that checked, please? Okay, you're using the Q&A option. One second. Okay, so maybe we have to use the Q&A session here. Uh, but are you able to see what I'm writing in the chat box or that is not visible to all? Okay, never mind. Okay, understood, got it. Not visible, okay. All right. Okay, so what I will do, uh, maybe for understanding whether you are able to speak to me directly. Uh, Amit, may I, if I unmute you, uh, can you just speak up and let me see whether uh, you are able ability to speak to me? Amit, I'm just going to unmute you so that you have an ability to speak. Hi, Amit, uh, can you hear and speak so that let me check whether everybody has an ability to speak? Hi, so Joy, good evening. I can. I can hear you loud and clear and you're equally well visible. Thank All you. Right. Thank you so much, Amit. Perfect. So it works. All right. So let's begin. <clears throat> so today's session. So let me just share my screen. And uh, that would be so useful. Okay. So today's session is about, it's a workshop. Okay. So we are going to spend the next 90 minutes in a workshop. We'll try and keep this interaction as interactive as possible, all right? And uh, so it is all about money, portfolio, and investments, okay? So, uh, so there are three things that we are going to cover today. So we are going to talk about uh, the importance of money. How do we begin with getting money and more money in our hands and how to, you know, go work towards, uh, you know, so that we have a larger disposable income left in our hands. Then how do we use that larger disposable income in the form of savings and investments and how do we go around building a portfolio? And uh, last but not the least is that what is the smart way of making those investment choices? All right. So three very you know, uh, relevant topics in today's world. In fact, relevant in every, every point in time. Okay. So, so there are three parts. So manage your money is one part that we are going to discuss. Then we are going to discuss about how do we go around building our portfolio, okay? If we have to build a portfolio, what do we mean by a portfolio? What are the various things that goes into building a portfolio? And lastly, make smart investment choices, all right? So uh, these are the three things that we are going to cover over here. Let me just quickly check whether there are any questions so far. Okay, there are no questions from anybody. So just use the Q&A button to ask questions at any point in time, all right? So, perfect. So before we move on, uh, just two minutes, maybe you have already seen me in a few of the digital banners here and there, uh, but my name is Sujoya Das. I'm the co-founder of Oava. Oava is an online academy. In fact, in Oava is India's first uh, finance-focused edtech firm. Uh, my former work experience has been as a C head of fixed income at Invesco Mutual Fund. Prior to that, I was heading investments at Bharti AXA Mutual Fund. And prior to that, I was with DSP Merrill Lynch Mutual Fund. Over 25 years of experience in this world of bonds, interest rates, currencies, fixed income, and so on. And I've been managing money both in, for Indian investors and for foreign investors. So, uh, and in 2005 and 2012, I was amongst the top 10 fund managers of the country, surveyed by Business Today and MutualFundsIndia.com. All right. So uh, that's a little bit about myself. And uh, 
and feel free, all right? So let's keep this conversation as interactive as possible. If you have an ability to raise your hand and ask questions at any point in time, okay? And we will unmute you and we can ask questions. Let's get going, all right? So uh, let's begin with the story. So maybe for a few of you, you will feel that we are starting at a little, you know, early stage and a very, you know, simple manner, but slowly we are going to build this conversation as we go along, okay? Uh, while this conversation is all about money. So it is very important that we try and connect the dots as we go along, all right? So let's begin with a story. So this story about, is about a young boy whose name is Ravi. And Ravi has started working. Uh, in fact, this is his first job. And uh, he has been earning money uh, every month and his monthly salary is around 90,000 rupees. All right, so Ravi is a young boy. This is his first job and a monthly salary income of 90,000 rupees. Now, the first thing that comes to mind is that moment there is an income, right? So then there is obviously the government who is staring at us, right? So moment there is an income, there is an element of tax that comes in. So uh, we have the finance minister sitting uh, in the parliament and she obviously wants tax income. And tax in income is so very important for the government because once they collect taxes, that is the amount that they have with them when they want to spend back, right? So tax, so they are going to tax some money out of Ravi. So let's assume that the tax Ravi is, is going to pay is approximately 10%, all right? So, uh, so what is 10% of 90,000? So Ravi is possibly going to pay 9,000 rupees out of his monthly salary income. So what is left is called disposable income, right? So 90,000 minus 9,000, so it is no rocket science. So Ravi has a disposable income of 81,000 rupees. So that's no small sum of money by any standards, but, but obviously there it is a shave off. So there is a 9,000 rupees which goes out. And we are going to talk about how we can address this tax component, how we can build this disposable income over a period of time and so on and so forth, all right? Let's move on. So this is the income element of Ravi, okay? Then Ravi is obviously leading a life. So there is a life uh, and there is expenditures coming up. So Ravi is actually spending money every, every day in a month, right? So there are a few expenditures which are there on the right hand side. <clears throat> So what are the few expenditures that could be? So Ravi is staying in a rented accommodation and uh, there is a rental expenditure of 20,000 rupees a month, okay? Then there is Ravi spending money on food. So there is 25,000 approximately Ravi is spending on food. Then Ravi is also like to go out, spend money in restaurants and outing. So spends around 30,000 rupees a month and then spends on electricity, petrol, maid servants, all of that, which is approximately 5,000 rupees a month, and then comes clothes. So Ravi spent some money on clothes, approximately 6,000, 7,000 7, rupees a month, and that makes a total expenditure of 87,000 rupees. This is where the problem begins. So can anybody you know, uh, raise the hand and ask the question, so where does the problem lie according to you in this entire example? Anybody who wants to have a look at it and make any comment? Anyone? Where, what do you think, where do you think the problem lies here? One second, let me just unmute you. One second. Yes. Can you ask the question please, Prudvi? Yes, both of you have been unmuted. Um, Please, yeah. Please go ahead. Restaurant and outing. So do you think that's the, the problem is? Okay, restaurant and outing. So why do you think restaurant and outing is a problem here? Because he rents 20,000 per month, food for 25, and restaurant outing is for 30,000 per month. So if he is doing some uh less outing over there so he can divert that money into any other instrument 
and cloth is obvious that 7000 will be applicable and electric and petrol made that is definitely but the problem one over here is in restaurant outing so you can change that investment into something in any other instruments that's my absolutely no, I, i think you you have you are trying to pinpoint the actual problem but i was looking at a larger problem over here yes let's look look, look at the second one prithvi what's what's your response to this Okay, Prithvi, we can hear you. You have been unmuted, or Praveen. To me, like rent for electric clothes are which is needed, and restaurant is like want. So we can sacrifice on that, like compare it to to other. Sure, sure, but this Ravi is quite a flashy boy, and he is liking to go out and all that, and partying and all of that. So he ends up spending thirty thousand rupees. Okay. and uh, that's where the problem lies so that's where the big problem is but from a money perspective can anybody identify where is what is the problem that ravi is encountering every month uh, then he is only ending up 3000 sorry i didn't get that he is only ending up 3000 by the month and so he don't have any savings no so out of 90000 he is anyway paying a tax of 9000 rupees so he is left with 81000 so yes not 90000 rupees so there is a there is a problem right and this problem how do you think ravi do you think ravi has enough money to pay for 87000 rupees every month he is in debt he is in debt if an individual like ravi is in debt what are the options that ravi has to meet because he has already gone to the restaurant So what will he do when he has to pay this money? Maybe he has to use the credit card. Maybe he has to use the credit card. Not maybe he will end up using the credit card, and this is what is going to happen. So there is going to be a deficit of six thousand rupees because ninety thousand was his income. He paid nine thousand rupees taxes out of it. Eighty one thousand was his disposable income, and he ended up in a very flashy life where he spent eighty seven thousand rupees that month. and hence his credit card bill is going to be 6000 rupees do you think any your you yourself or maybe your friends end up in a situation like this do you think it happens rahul let me unmute you rahul what's your response so there are quite Hello. a few yes please Sorry, Ravi. I just have lack of financial planning knowledge. Lack of financial planning knowledge. Anyway, we are writing a certificate. Yeah. So there is a problem. All right. So let me let me just quickly go back and uh, move on with the presentation, and let's see where the problem lies. Okay. So let me. Uh, anybody? Anybody else who wants to make any comment here at this stage? Prithvi, did we hear you, or did you make any comment? No. Anand, you had raised. Uh, your hand. Yes, this credit card may not serve forever for him with this lifestyle. Absolutely, bang on, Anand. Because if there is a credit card bill of six thousand rupees coming up every month, or maybe in the first month, that money has to be paid, right? So where will the money come from? Is the question. Now. Uh, we will look at few options how, how do we meet all of them so let let me just quickly disable the talking so that there is no background noise but whatever so if you guys maybe you can raise your hand again when you whenever you want to speak okay so let let's move on so we have a situation here where ravi is earning 81000 rupees but he has ended up spending 87000 rupees and 6000 rupees is his deficit in that month and he ends up paying that in the form of a credit card swipe okay but the question is that credit card bill has to be paid so this is one big problem that not just personal individuals end up into in fact that is a situation that many comp companies also face at some point in time now 
can somebody quickly raise your hand and tell me but so the topic of the slide is importance of debt right so where do you think the problem lied was it the lifestyle of ravi because the kind of expenditure because we also see individuals taking a loan right so we see individuals taking a loan to buy a car we see individuals taking a loan to buy a house or maybe buy a land we see companies taking a loan to set up factories and so on so obviously an individual or a corporate take up a loan when their expenditure or their or their potential expenditure or their estimated ex not potential the estimated expenditure is larger than their cash position so is taking a loan a wise decision or not a wise decision in the case of ravi maybe not such a great wise decision but is that the situation all the time what do you think it is yes rahul you have raised your hand anand as well yes please go ahead why do you think what is the importance of debt in a person's life and in a company's life and at what point in time somebody should take a borrowing for purpose of a loan if it is uh, uh, focusing on increasing the income level going forward yes definitely that would be helpful but okay. otherwise just just a spending i mean uh, that is not a wise decision mm -hmm. so taking a loan to buy something which will help in increasing the future income right that's what you said anand right correct? yes yes absolutely so you actually you you quite wisely summarize the basic essence of debt so so debt can arise because of multiple situation okay and it could be because it it is for a situation because your income is lower than your expenditure that is the first reason why you get into a position of debt right but the reason why you have got into debt has to be meaningful if the reason for getting into debt is for a capital expenditure where where you are spending money to build capital or asset then the story could be completely different if tomorrow reliance is borrowing some money to build up another refinery at jamnagar and so on expanding it there so the, obviously there would be an expectation that that money which is being used to build refinery is going to increase your future income and revenues that has going to have a different connotation compared to that if if reliance is taking up loan to give away doles to their employees giving out you know large houses and cars and just spending the money without expecting any much return from that then that situation could be adverse for that for that particular entity and this situation can happen for an individual that situation can happen for a corporate as well so in the last 2 3 years in fact uh, i i i i'm not sure about how many of you have been tracking the indian banking industry and indian economy for the last 2 3 years but the last 3 4 years has been particularly quite worrisome from an indian economy perspective primarily because of emergence of huge amount of debt within the economy are are we aware about it so do you think that the quantum of debt within the economy is large and over here when i'm talking of debt i'm talking of debt of everything it's private debt public debt everything what's your assessment is the is the quantum of debt within the economy large and which is manageable or is it large and unmanageable or is it is it, is it manageable what do you think it is and can you cite some examples of corporates which have really gone through trouble or maybe even individuals so we have a few quite a few cases right now and that is where you know when we are talking of managing money managing money is all about managing the debt yes yes so you please go ahead you are enabled to speak first an important the message to the economy go gone in the corona virus that was just bank limited 
Okay. By Rana Kapoor, and that news was that because of the DHFL home finance, they have taken a lot of money from them, but they are unable to pay the bank that credit. So the Yes Bank were down, and according because I am there and I am seeing the uh, stocks of all the PSU banks. all the uh, national banks each and every sector that i am feeling little bit uh, now a uh, little bit afraid of this indian economy because of last uh, from since uh, december 2019 the this journey starts from 2017 it an important way so means the start was from 2017 but we seen the economic crisis from 2019 17 18 19 the 3 years was the preparation of fall not up okay preparation of fall okay yes and because of the covid 19 crisis uh, covid 19 uh, corona virus we are calling it so that virus uh, Enter to our India, and that so and so the stages happen, means in health uh, care sectors uh, and so on. Those who have taken insurance were settled, but this situation was not seen by each and every one of us. Means even in the sense health sectors were also not known about it. The person who has taken an insurance was also not able to take an insurance because of. the covid 19 was not included in that policy so there were quite so, a few reasons uh, yes so now in this debt perspective so there were quite a few corporates in india and individuals as well uh in individuals as well who have gone through this trouble uh where where their debt element on their books was far higher uh, like there is this classic example of ireland fs right so it is it is like a quasi government entity and uh, it was like a triple a entity it was it was a triple a entity and they defaulted so we had a dhfl we had reliance adag group so there are quite a few companies who were earlier triple a entities credit rating triple a which means absolutely pristine quality and these companies were unable to repay their borrowings on time and that led to a collapse of these companies completely so yes bank also had some problems and so on so so in in this entire business of managing money right so in the, in this entire business of managing money what is important is that one needs to be absolutely certain in the way one is actually managing their debt okay and uh, there is nothing as important to understand the importance of debt and 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 manage that well so what are the few things that one can do to do that better okay let's move on and let's see each of them in detail so when it comes to managing your money the first thing that one has to do has to ensure that you are tracking your spending right so whenever you are spending money whether you are going out and outing or you know restaurants and so on whether you are spending your money well is important create attainable monthly budgets or what we call targets like okay if my income disposable income is 81000 rupees i am not going to spend more than maybe let's say 70000 rupees in no way i'm going to cross that so there has to be clear attainable budgets which one should not go beyond so that is second thing is important third there has to be some money left in the bank at the end of the month so you have to keep building on your savings right and fourth how do we do that many a times we feel that the oh that the electricity bill is spending that cell phone bill is spending the wifi bill is spending you pay penalties and so on always ensure that there is some discipline and we pay off the bills on time right so some amount of discipline around this really helps in a situation like this okay reduce the expenses clearly you know if if we completely keep going berserk and keep spending 
huge amount of money every month thinking that that uh, you know we will have a larger income in the future point in time and my expenditure will be taken care of like in this case of ravi that ravi thought that okay so that i'm swiping my credit card for 6000 rupees this month maybe thinking that next month is going to make some additional income and that's going to uh, his way of repaying that credit card bill so it might happen or might not happen right nobody is absolutely sure about how, how one does go about that so it's very important that one actually reduce their expenditures and stays within their means last save so track your spending pay your bills on time have clear budgets and save money and what do you do with that saving okay what do you do with that saving is very important because if money is just maintained as or kept as savings then possibly the future you know the story will be different we are going to discuss all of that today so the the relevance of savings and investments and at what point in time one should start moving from savings into investment what kind of strategy one should have and and so on and so forth quite briefly but we are going to discuss each one of them okay so any questions so far anybody any questions maybe raise your hand if you have any questions i'm just going to quickly go through and see if there are any questions no there are no questions anywhere okay feel free okay so i think thank you this group has been quite responsive and interactive let's keep it this way let's move into a little more of this what we discussed a little while back Ajay, Umar has raised the hand. Just give me one second. Yes, Umar, what's your question? Do you have any question, Umar, please? Yes. Yes. Can please. you elaborate on emergency fund? The emergency fund? Yes. Emergency. Okay, perfect. So emergency fund is a fund that one sets aside uh, in order to meet some unplanned expenditure, okay? So when, whenever you're planning for your financial goals, so there are two ways, two, two kinds of goals, right? So one goal, which is like planned for, like maybe you think that I'm going to go for a higher education or maybe I'm going to go for a vacation and maybe in two years time or five years time, you plan for that, okay? So for somebody, it could be maybe the marriage in the family, or somebody may even think about a long-term plan goal of maybe a retirement, okay? 30 years yeah. later, I'm going to retire, you plan for it. But there are a few expenditures which actually happen in our life, but nobody knows if that is actually going to happen to you or even if it happens at what point in time it's going to happen to you. So these are unplanned situations. In these unplanned situations, you end up spending money but you don't know how much money you will need at that point in time or when you would need that money. So these are, so there are ways of saving money for an unplanned financial situation. And these are called emergency funds. So you save money uh, for an emergency kind of situation, uh, but you don't know how much you would need in that emergency fund, how large it should be, but you really need to plan in two different ways. One is a planned investments and second one is your unplanned all right Umar? yeah thank you great all right so let, let's move on uh so what we think is that at the end of the day in today's life saving money is very boring like who wants to save according to you what makes sense let me do a quick poll what make what, what makes you happy you are happy earning money or are you happy spending money? What makes? How many of you, let, let, just show of hands, how many of you raise your hands? Are you happy raising, uh, uh, spending money or are you happy earning money? Suyok says, what? Let me just quickly ask a question. Great. Okay. Oops. Okay, sorry. Suyok, you're happy earning money or spending money? Spending money in a certain way, but happy in earning money. <laughs> there should be a limit for the spending money. 
Absolutely. There's a lot of wisdom. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think the chat function has been enabled now. Uh, can one of you quickly try and, you know, put that, uh, you know, just check, see whether it has been enabled. Can somebody type in the chat box? Is it enabled? Not yet. Sir, it's okay. No problem. Chat. We can go into question and answer and tag over there. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. No, but Minakshi, the chat box is still not enabled for okay. that. It is yet. So, okay. Okay. yeah. Can you just check it from the background? Sorry. Yeah. yeah All right. Thank you. All right. Let's move on. Okay. So let me just quickly check if there are any questions which have been typed. All right, no questions. Okay, saving money is boring, but spending money is fun. That's, that's what we, most of the people of today's generation are happy with. Okay. Now, now Suyok said like, okay, it's happy earning money and you know, fun spending money, but within limits and so on. Now the question comes, so Yogi, you have a question, one second, let me just allow you to talk. Yes, please, what's your question? No, no, sir, that was, sorry for that hand, hand rest. Oh, no worries. Okay, so now, the, now let's, it brings us to a very important part of today's workshop about our ability to grow the money. Okay, so what we were discussing so far was our ability to save money. So we have an income. So first is ability to earn money. So that comes from education and your skill sets and so on. So ability to earn money, then there is an expenditure element. And then whatever is left behind is, is your savings. Now, now, the trickiest part and where we are going to spend a lot of time today right now is the ability to grow the money. Now, growing money can happen in case that money is invested in something which is called assets, correct? Now, uh, maybe in the Q&A box, can somebody write down, like, what do you think an asset is? Hmm? I think the chat box has been enabled. What do you think is an asset? What is an asset? How do we identify assets? And how do we grow our money? Okay, Pravin says what you owe. What you owe or what you own? Pravin, is it what you owe or what you own? Deva asset is what pays us. Yes, absolutely. Asset is what pays us. Anybody else? What do you own? Right. What you owe is, is debt, right? Something that you have to give back to somebody else. Property, financial assets. Okay. Asset is something that gives us passive income. Okay. Fantastic. So it's quite an enlightened group. Thank you, Namya. So yes, brilliant. Assets can be short-term or long-term. Yes. Assets could be of various, various kinds. Ability to grow money is important. So for an individual, for a corporate, for any, any legal entity, the money that is left behind in the form of savings has to keep growing. And we will discuss why it needs to keep growing. What, which one is the most important asset that we possess? Can somebody tell us? Everybody is in possession of an asset. Which is the most important asset that everybody possesses? Any answer? I think it's already on the screen. Ourselves. Umar Sheikh, yes, absolutely. It's ourselves. It's human resource. Each one of us are an asset. Because we have, from a financial perspective, we are putting ourselves 
out in the market, working in companies, working in, in our businesses to grow, make money, earn money and grow that money. We have been investing in ourselves from our childhood, uh, in education, in knowledge, in social interactions, in conversations, in languages, and all of that, so that when we grow up, we have an ability to have a decent livelihood, right? So the most important asset that we, or each one of us poses is ourselves, which is a human resource, right? Now, there is a problem to it. Now, what is the problem? So while we are the most important asset and whatever we do in our life depends upon what we are as an individual, but we will have a limitation to that because over a period of time, our you know, physical ability will keep diminishing. So it will keep increasing till a point in time, then it will keep diminishing, right? And then there is an element of retirement and you know, staying back at home because you don't have the physical strength to go out and work and so on. But life doesn't end there. Does everybody's life end when the day you retire? Answer is no. We live longer. The average life expectancy is much longer than the, the average age at which people retire in our country. So while human resource is the most important asset, we also need to identify assets beyond ourselves. So that I think somebody did mention, uh, the name is C-H-I-C-A. I don't know what's the pronunciation, but uh, the, the person has mentioned that this asset is something that gives us passive income. Passive income, right? So apart from us going out and working and earning money in an active manner, we should have an ability to invest our money into some other assets which has an ability to grow and, and generate a pass passive income. So what are those? Somebody has already mentioned, it could be in the form of a financial asset, right? So financial assets, can you give us a few examples of financial assets in the chat box quickly? A few examples of financial assets. Very quickly in the chat box, a few examples of financial assets. Yes, Suyog, you want to say something? Stocks, bonds, ETFs. Mutual funds are the assets. Mm -hmm. Yes, quite a few. So mutual funds, stock investments, Umar says real estate, Anand says fixed deposits, Namya says stocks, bonds, all of that. So these are all examples of financial assets, right? Uh, what could be other examples uh, other than financial assets? Those are called non-financial assets. Few examples, please, non-financial assets. What do you think? Few, few other examples of non-financial assets. Skills. Okay. Skills is again human resource. Okay. But other than land, Namia says land, real estate. Okay. Anything else? The most, you know, yes, land, crypto. <laughs> Amit says crypto. Crypto. Goodwill. Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? No. Okay, gold is also actually uh, quite you know, widely accepted non-financial asset. Okay, great. So let's move on. So what we are saying is that money is important. We need to stay within our income levels, have, have some savings left at the end of the month, and that savings needs to convert into some investment strategy such that we are able to build on our assets Assets beyond ourselves, maybe in the form of financial assets or non-financial assets. Let's look at what is an asset and how do we identify the right asset for ourselves, whether it's a financial or a non-financial, okay? An asset is something which has got an economic value, okay? So when we go out to work, we, we get a job and we are quite happy and we are, we are thinking, oh, wow, I've got a job of 20,000 rupees or 50,000 rupees or five lakh rupees and we're very happy. The reason that company is paying out, paying 20,000 rupees or 50,000 rupees or five lakh rupees to us is because of the value that we are going to generate for that company. They're not just giving money to us on face value. 
whatever we are earning is because of the value that we are generating for that company. And that is nothing, and this value is only calculated as an economic value, okay? Now, what is that? Is the value that we place on an economic good based on the benefit we derive from it. So over here, goods could be human beings as well. So the salary that we earn is basically nothing but the economic benefit that the company is deriving because of me working in that company, okay? Now, there could be two kinds that something can be defined as an asset. It could be one is this. And second, the ability to generate cash flow in the future. Because of me working in the company or because of me buying that land in the company, we have an ability, that land has an ability to generate cash in the future, okay? So, so these are the two things that define something which is called an asset, all right? So let me see if there are any hands which have been raised. Anybody wants to make any comment? Okay, so there is one hand. Yes, please. What's your comment, please? Any comment? Anybody? Anybody wants to make any comment? Anything? No? Okay. It's clear? So far, so good? All right, let's move on. Let's move on to the part which is called, how do we build our portfolio or asset? So we have money, right? We have some disposable income and that we have some savings left. We know we have to build assets, but how do we go about building our portfolio or asset? Okay, so that's important. Ideally, why are we building this portfolio? It's an important question. We are building this portfolio for two reasons. First, that portfolio we are building because there is an economic value attached to that. And that portfolio is a combination of various assets. It could be stocks, bonds, it could be uh, you know, currencies, it could be uh, you know, maybe cryptos, maybe land, maybe properties, maybe residential, maybe commercial, gold. It could be a variety, international bonds, international securities. It could be of various kinds. It's a portfolio. It's a combination of many, many things, right? All right. Now, the way to build a portfolio is that we are building this portfolio. Why are we building this portfolio at all? We are building this portfolio because when we need to use that money, which is locked up in that portfolio, we have an ability to generate money out of that, okay? Today, let's look at it in this manner. Suppose we had 100 rupees of savings, okay? We took that 100 rupees of savings and we put that into an asset. And we put that into an asset because there was an economic value and that asset was generating, let's say, 10 rupees every, every month, okay? Now, after a point in time, we reached a situation and as Umar asked, so there was a need to liquidate that portfolio because I needed that 100 rupees back. And by that time, that 100 rupees has grown in size and that 100 has become, let's say, 150 rupees. And there is a need for me to get that 150 rupees. So that portfolio that I have built should have an ability to be quickly converted into cash. So that is one very important yardstick. What are the few things that can quickly convert into cash. The first thing that can quickly convert into cash is cash itself, right? If I don't do anything, if I have just have money and, and just keep that in the form of cash, I will be able to meet any kind of emergency, right? Any kind of planned goal or financial position that I'm in. But it will not be generating too much of money. It will be just lying as is. So cash is the most important liquid form of money that is available, which is the second one. There could be properties, okay? You could have a savings account. A savings account has an ability to be quickly converted. You can walk into your bank and withdraw that money and that money is yours, right? So, and this money is available on demand. So you, you have five lakh rupees in a savings account. You walk into the bank, you can withdraw that entire five lakh rupees in one shot and the money gets converted into cash for you. Fourth one, fixed deposits. Fixed deposits, you invest, you deposit your money with a bank for a certain period of time, for a fixed period of time. That's why it's called a fixed deposit. 
and uh, at the end of that term you can you can walk up to the bank and it, that you can in cash and the maturity amount gets into your savings account right so so that's a fixed deposit mutual funds is a very very you know popular investment vehicle that investors use to invest into the market so mutual funds are extremely liquid right so why do people use mutual funds investors use mutual funds because they themselves might not have an ability to invest into the markets with the kind of knowledge and wisdom that is necessary. Hence, they actually go to a professional who, whose business is all about managing money in markets. So that is the role. So in mutual funds is nothing but an investment vehicle for investors to invest in the market, right? PMS, alternative investment funds. So these are all examples. Portfolio management service is PMS. EIF is alternative investment fund. So something which is not stocks, bonds, something which is slightly different. Maybe you're investing into art or maybe you're investing into maybe wine. Uh, so these are all examples of, of assets which, which can be converted into cash at a point in time, right? And last but not the least is gold. You, you, can, you can clearly invest into gold and uh, gold you can quickly convert into cash at any point in time so if, if you build a portfolio it could be even a post office deposit it could be investing into direct equities and bonds and so on and so forth so so all of these are examples of 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 uh, assets with which you can build your portfolio all right so makes sense so uh, any questions anybody okay LIC comes under fixed deposit? No, LIC doesn't come under fixed deposit. LIC is as an insurance uh, institution. So they insure your risk, right? So, so LIC doesn't come under fixed deposit. These are all examples of investment assets, okay? Uh, LIC can have two kinds of products. LIC can have an insurance product or LIC can also have an insurance product, which is also bundled into an investment product. So, so then, then it can be called uh, an asset, but primarily LIC is in the business of insuring the risk of an individual, okay? It's life insurance. So they insure the life of an individual, right? And uh, that is a different, uh, completely a different product. It is not an asset. But now LIC, not now, but last many, many years, LIC has also been in LIC for that matter. Many other insurance companies, public, uh, private insurance companies also have been selling insurance products in the guise of investment products. So they are not just selling insurance products because selling an insurance product is, is a quite a tricky thing because just walking up to an individual and saying that, oh, there is a risk on your life because life is... Everybody is immortal. Nobody's immortal over here. We'll all go away one day. So why don't you insure your life? So, uh, and you insure, whenever you insure, you always insure an asset, right? Because human beings are all assets. Uh, we have an ability to make money. That's why all insurance companies come out with a product which will insure our life. So, okay. Uh, so there's a question from Chicha, Chika, what's your name? So, I don't know, sorry, can't, can't understand your name clearly. Uh, what decides how liquid an asset can be and why is real estate less liquid than cash? Good. So the market in which those assets are decides how liquid it is. That's, that's, that is what the meaning. Now, suppose there is a stock and then there is a real estate, okay? Suppose you have one lakh rupees with which you have bought a house or you have one lakh rupees with which you have invested into the stock market. Now liquidity or the liquid, what is the meaning of liquidity? Liquidity is the ability to liquidate your asset on the go, correct? So you have an ability to convert that asset into cash immediately. How will you be able to do that? That is only possible when there is a transaction happening in the market. Right? So when there is a transaction, so how does the transaction happen? So when there is a seller and then there is an immediate buyer in the market, when the seller sells and at that point in time, there is a buyer also who's interested to buy that asset, that is when the transaction happens. 
stock markets there the stocks many of the stocks we shouldn't say all of the stocks but many of the stocks are extremely liquid but there is since there is always a ready buyer and then there is a ready seller for that stock hence transactions happen in large volumes and and they keep happening through the day hence hence since there are large transactions happening equity stocks are extremely liquid okay but does real estate get uh, do we see transactions in real estate as often like this like every minute there is a transaction in reliance share do you see a mi every minute transaction in properties or or real estate answer is no people build houses to live in them they don't be won't be transacting in them uh, as often like a stock right so the basic nature of the asset actually determines the holding period and that determines the level of liquidity when you buy gold few of them few, many a times you might be transacting in gold but you won't be transacting you know you buy gold in the morning or sell off gold the, by, and by the evening you sell it off you don't do that right you buy gold and maybe you buy it for your marriage or maybe you buy it for few years or maybe you buy it for your retirement or sometimes you may even buy it for your next gen generation as well right so so few the basic nature of the asset determines the level of transaction uh, or the quantum of transaction that happens and the quantum of transaction determines the level of liquidity in that particular asset all right so that that is how it is okay any any questions anybody any comment uh so yog you have your hand raised do you want to make any comment here sir uh, pms means postal management scheme what no pms is portfolio management scheme okay and ai ai means alternative investment fund absolutely alternative investment so in portfolio management scheme or alternative investment fund so uh, in that uh, section are the uh, uh, instruments like fd and rd lies or it is different than uh, uh, no, this they are completely different so uh, portfolio management scheme so i'll tell you the basic difference of a portfolio management and mutual fund okay and they will it will help you understand the difference so a mutual fund is a fund where the fund has already been floated uh, and that fund has a particular objective in mind and then investor who's you know investment objective is aligned so suppose let let us look at it this way suppose there is a fund which only invests into large cap equity stocks okay and then there is an investor who feels that okay i want to invest in large cap equity stocks but i don't have an ability to do it myself okay so that investor will invest into that mutual fund so similarly there could be thousands and lakhs of investors who are interested to invest only in large cap stocks so all these investors will invest into that fund so that is how a mutual fund gets formed what happens in a pms pms is is a slightly a larger product it is for the wealthier individual okay it is it is also called an hni product high net worth individual product but the reason it is called hni product is that what happens in a pms is that a a single portfolio gets created for a single individual nobody else can invest in that portfolio so that individual might say i want 20% in large cap 10% in bonds 30% in gold and so on so depending upon the investment objective of that individual one particular portfolio will be created for that particular individual only and nobody else will be allowed to invest into that fund and so that is called a portfolio management scheme okay alternative investment funds are basically funds which just not invest into stocks and bonds they invest into some variants of that it could be a derivative of a stock it could be a derivative of a bond it could be a derivative of a currency it could be a long short positions something which is not a mainstream investment asset class something which is not the mainstream are part of the alternative investment funds so this aif is available is generally invested by those investors who are slightly more you know aware and literate about this investment options it is not for the general investors or individuals or retail investors it is for somebody who is slightly more enlightened about the risks and returns of this investment class all right 
sir sir post office deposits like uh, means where we are enrolling in it and uh, the yojanas like uh, means plri means postal uh, uh, sorry rural postal life insurance means plr and and pli and uh, sukanya samruddhi yojana which lies in the post office depo uh, schemes so this all the schemes uh, and yojanas behalf of post office lies in post office uh, post office deposits absolutely so all of them would come under your post post office deposit schemes absolutely okay thanks sir great so let me just quickly check in any questions more okay in the chat box uh, yes yes absolutely correct you did say correctly that the the you know total number of interested buyers is actually deciding factor whether the asset is a liquid one or not is pms a legal service in india yes absolutely anand pms is absolutely a legal service in india it is regulated by sebi and uh, most of the mutual funds in india also has a pms license uh, so they they are called asset management companies so like the company i used to work for invesco asset management so invesco asset management has got two licenses invesco mutual fund and invesco pms all right so and both this uh, you know uh, investment services are regulated by the market regulator which is sebi okay so they are the capital market regulator so it is an absolutely legal service in india all right let's move on how do we make some smart investment choices okay and this is where we are going to build the conversation slightly deeper into it okay and please stay hooked on and please use the chat box as much as you can to record your responses because there there are quite a few linkages so maybe towards the end i'm going to open it up for conversation but before that i'll just going to keep it in the chat box all right while we are making our portfolio while we are not making while we are building our portfolio how do we make smart investment choices very crucial okay let's begin let us think about a situation like where the present economy is in india that there is an economic slowdown okay this is the current situation so we have an economic slowdown we have a high inflation kind of situation and uh, everybody is unsure about what's really happening around us okay so what what do you think is the immediate you know uh, fall back of this can you use the chat box <clears throat> to record your responses what do you think is happening because of this economic slowdown from a consumer's perspective is it impacting us as individuals or is it not impacting us as individuals what do you think is happening anybody quickly in the chat box there are quite a few interesting things that we have to cover so okay let me just move on so whenever there is an economic slowdown and please stop me if you think that i am going slightly fast or slow and or or maybe you are unable you need a repetition of what i'm saying please feel free to stop me okay whenever there is an economic slowdown okay economic slowdown <clears throat> less number of transactions taking place we will see yes it's quite possible leads to a drop in wages and consumer spending economic slowdown means what <clears throat> economic slowdown that means companies are not earning enough company revenue growth is not happening manufacturing growth is not happening that will lead to you know drop in wages because if the companies are not earning enough they are not going to pay their employees enough isn't it right uh so if these two things happen it whenever we are earning less what will happen we will also end up spending less right economic slowdown leads to drop in wages leads to drop in consumer spending it can also lead to rise in unemployment when these things happen both government and rbi will become concerned that's quite natural 
and they will start thinking like what are the kind of policy measures so we have rbi shakti kanta on one side and we have nirmala as a finance minister on the other side both of them are concerned equally concerned about how to address a situation like this where we have a slowdown correct everybody so far with me yes no in the chat box yes amit says yes perfect thank you and feel free to stop me because we are just going to build a very interesting story as we go along now okay so both government and rbi will become concerned and they will start to take policy measures so what are the kind of policy measures rbi will take whenever there is an economic slowdown so rbi so i'm i'm not asking this question but i'm saying that rbi is going to reduce the rates and print more money so these are the two things rbi generally does whenever there is an economic slowdown okay have you noticed that when when covid hit us in 2020 right there was this massive slowdown we were locked up in our homes india's gdp actually contracted uh, for for multiple quarters uh, in that year what did rbi do at that point in time rbi dropped the interest rates and they started printing more money very quickly can somebody tell me why do you think rbi reduces interest rates and prints more money in a time of economic slowdown A any any response why do you think rbi reduces interest rates yes there is an answer cash flow cash flow okay there is an answer called cash flow A anybody who wants to speak up so this is very important that we build the logic and reasoning reasoning correctly over here rbi reduces so what is interest rate? Interest rate is nothing but the cost of money. Just remember this forever. Interest rates is nothing but cost of money. Economic stimulus says Omar Shade. When, when the going gets tough, you don't make it even worse. You make it easy for the people so when there is an economic slowdown and companies are not producing enough and there is a drop in economic revenue for the companies and they are forced to drop wages for their employees maybe they're also retrenching few people you as an as an you know policy maker one has to reduce the pain in the economy so what what are the few things that they can do so there are few only two things that they can do rbi can start reducing interest rates by by doing so what happens is that anybody who is looking to borrow some money will not feel the pinch enough suppose the home loan rates are not 15% but like 10% so somebody who is looking to buy a loan maybe the interest burden is going to be less somebody who has already taken a loan so there is a company who has already taken a loan for them the interest burden will be little less right as interest rates come down and rbi does second thing is that they print enough money so they print money and give it to the banks right and says that anybody who comes to you for money give it to them it could be company it could be individuals it could be anybody anybody who is coming to you give them money don't say no because anyway there is a economic slowdown don't make it worse for them what does rbi do RBI also tries to reduce the pain by reducing the taxes. RBI may cut down the GST, maybe cut down the income tax, or RBI they themselves will start spending more money. Sorry, government will uh, reduce the taxes and they themselves, government themselves will be spending more money. In that process, more money will get into the system. So these two things are combination are called economic stimulus. I think one of you did mention that. Omar Sheikh did mention. So the combination of these two policies of Reserve Bank of India and government make up to what is called the economic stimulus. In this process, what happens? Do you think depositors become happy or do you think depositors become unhappy? 
have already written it on the screen. So as interest rates come down, so depositors who have their money in a bank, suppose earlier was earning 7% on a fixed deposit, since RBI has cut interest rates by let's say 200 basis points, so seven has come down to five. So whenever that FD is coming up for maturity and gets renewed, the new interest rate will be 5% because the repo rate has been cut by 2%. So in that process, depositors will become unhappy. Clear? Absolutely clear. Maybe the chat box is right. Or maybe do you want me to repeat? Umar says yes. Everybody is yes. Or somebody there is like wants me to repeat. Anand says yes. Pravin says Nikdika says yes. Amit says yes. Perfect. Great. Suppose. So depositors become unhappy. When you are unhappy, what do you do? You look for an alternative. Every depositor who becomes unhappy will start looking for an alternative. Correct? Because if you were earning 7% on your fixed deposit earlier and you were happy, but now that 7% has dropped to 5%, you will become potentially unhappy. Then you will start to look for an alternative, like whether I can earn something little more than 5% somewhere. So what are the options? So they will start looking at bonds and debt mutual funds because why bonds and debt mutual funds? Let me clarify that. Because when Reserve Bank of India has cut interest rates, the immediate first line where the impact is, is, is noticed is the bank deposits. Bond yields do not move down as quickly because it is not an administered rate. Deposit rates are administered. So repo rate comes down, all the banks will start dropping their deposit rates immediately because many of these deposit rates are linked to the repo rate. So if you bring down the repo rate, everything else moves down quickly. But bond prices are not linked to repo rate. Bond prices are a function about demand and supply in the market. So it can happen that there is a five-year fixed deposit, which was earlier seven and right now 5%. But there is a five-year bond, which was earlier 6%. And that's the reason it was you know, people were investing in FD and not in the bond because it was slightly lower. But if after the FD comes down to five, the bond is still at six. Or maybe a debt mutual funds YTM into maturity is still at 6% or 6.5%. So there is a huge amount of flow of money which happens from the banking industry. So the banks start to lose money of depositors where, where the depositors move out of the bank and get invested into bonds and debt mutual funds. So generally it is observed that after the repo rate comes down as RBI cuts interest rates, the bond prices start to go up, okay? Bond prices, so that's a different workshop, but bond price and yield is a inversely related. So as prices start to go up, yields start to keep coming down. So as prices go up, you start investing into bonds, yields start to keep coming lower. So let's to chat. Let me just quickly check. Okay, perfect. As yields start to move lower, okay? As yields start to move lower, they also become unattractive. You invest into a bond, which is at 6%, and then prices start to go up because few new investors start investing, six drops to 575, five up, five, it can even go lower than the FD rate because depending upon how fast money comes in, so the prices will keep moving higher and lower because it's a function of demand and supply in the market. As yields or bonds and debt mutual funds start to move lower, this set of investors also start to look for an alternative. They will look for the next one. That is when the equity prices start to go up because you feel that the debt mutual fund yield has also come down to an abnormally low level. So let me look for an alternative. The next best alternative could be equity because by then the equity prices are so low because there's an economic slowdown, right? So nobody, like a situation right now, stock markets are in, in dooms. People are it's getting hammered, right? Stock prices are low. So people look at few valuation metrics of equity and see that, oh, it's fantastic. And then they start to invest into equity. 
as you start to invest into equity and then the first batch of investors come in, second batch of investors come in, third batch of investors come in from who shift from debt mutual funds into equity, stock prices start to go up. As stock prices start to go up, this price rise leads to portfolio appreciation. So the portfolio that you have created, so you, in that you have bonds, you have equity, you have many other asset classes. So one of the asset classes could be stock market stocks, right? Equity or equity mutual funds, they start to go up. When, this, when they start to go up, portfolio appreciation leads to a positive wealth effect. Yes or no? Whenever money Whenever there is appreciation, when the stock markets go up, we are happy or are we unhappy? We, 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 any reasonable person will be happy, right? As you make money uh, in, in the markets. So this portfolio appreciation leads to a positive wealth effect. And finally, this positive wealth effect leads to a feel good factor. That's a human nature, right? Whenever there is a wealth effect, whenever you get more salary or salary, you get a bonus, or when, when your portfolio in which you have invested appreciates. Suppose you buy a house in Bombay at 10 lakhs and suddenly it becomes 20 lakhs and 40 lakhs and 50 lakhs, you'll be happy about it, right? And if you invest in the market and the basket prices start to go up, there is a positive wealth effect. This positive wealth effect leads to a pickup in spending. So what started off as a drop in consumer spending ends up as a pickup in spending. So this is how one needs to think about when you are making your investment choices. And that is what we are going to come to now. But firstly, before I move on to this slide, has everybody understood that in all the linkages of these, of, this, of, this, of these points? One needs to be absolutely clear about all these connecting dots here. When an economic slowdown happens, why the policymakers take this decision because ultimately nobody wants to slow down you want an economy to boom and what will lead to a boom is a drop in interest rates cutting taxes additional spending and printing more money that is what the monetary economics is all about if you take these measures ultimately it leads to a portfolio appreciation which leads to a feel-good factor wealth effect positive uh, wealth effect feel-good factor and whenever as individuals we are happy we go out and spend money. We don't go out and spend money when we are losing money every day. We go out and spend money uh, when we are happy, on our birthdays, right, on our anniversaries, when we are happy about it. So, and when we are have, making more money in the markets or maybe in the form of income, salaries, bonus, and so on, we spend money. So this entire monetary economics revolves around this interest rate theory. Okay, everybody absolutely clear? Correlations is all clear. Everybody, I want to see, see at least four or five yes on the chat box. If it is not, maybe I will repeat it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, three, four, five, five, six. It's all clear. Perfect. Let's move on. Let's spend some time looking at this slide. So over here, on the x-axis, there is time. And on the y-axis, there is GDP. Okay. And and this is the way the economy keeps moving up and down, the GDP. The GDP keeps moving up and down, right? So there will be periods of expansion. There will be period when it would peak out and then it would maybe slow down a little and then pick up again, come down a little, go up a little, come down a little. So this is a continuous process, okay? There would be periods when Indian economy would be growing at 10, 15%. There will be periods it would not grow as fast and so on. But what is the smart investment choice that one needs to do at what point in time is important? So when the economy is coming out of trough, right? Trough, there is a period of trough. So when the economy is slowing down and slowed down and reached its bottom, that is the time when you would see Reserve Bank of India coming in and spending money, cutting interest rates and printing more money and government cutting taxes because there's a slowdown here. So if there is a slowdown, so if there is a slowdown, eventually it will lead up lead to a pickup in spending. If there is a pickup in spending, stock markets boom because if there are people spending money, companies make tons of money. If companies make money, their stock prices will start going higher. So this is what it is. At the 
and the period of craft, please ensure that in your portfolio, you have enough and more of equity exposures, right? And when the economy is booming, boom shot, full, full throttle booming, you know that if the economy is booming, then it will lead to some kind of inflation and so on. And it could be eventually leading to some slowdown and so on. So immediately move out some significant portion of your equity into cash and bonds. Because in that situation, we, we, we would see some you know, terrible drop in the overall economic position, stock prices and so on, because RBI would come in and start taking some measures. Okay, so, so you get into equity, move into cash, come into bonds, move into cash, come into equity. So this is a continuous cycle. So as smart investors, the portfolio in which we are investing our money has to keep following some basic pattern depending upon how the economy is expanding or contracting. Okay. Now with that, I'm going to move to the last but most important section from my perspective is on stock valuations and interest rates. How do we know whether at a point in time, uh, and I have particularly used both the terms over here because stock prices and interest rates are all correlated. One, it is not different from each other. We just cannot understand stock market behavior without understanding interest rates. And we are going to spend next few minutes understanding both of them. Let's look at an example over here. Okay. <clears throat> Let's look at a company whose earnings is five crore rupees. One year, total earning, total earning for the company is five crore rupees, seven zeros. Five followed by seven zeros. So it's five crore rupees. The total number of shares that the company has issued is let's say 25 lakhs, okay? So there is a term that gets quite, you know, often used called EPS, earning per share, okay? So earning per share, that means what is the earning per share? Okay, what is the earning per share? So how do we calculate that? We have to calculate by dividing earnings by total number of shares. So we divide five crore by 25 lakhs, and we get 20 rupees. So the earning, so if you hold one share, that means the earning that particular share, and what is share? Why do we call it a share? We call it a share because it is a share of ownership in that company. So every time you are owning an equity share, that means you have a share in the ownership of the company. So that by the very you know, root of holding that share, that particular share is earning 20 rupees, all right? So five crore divided by number of shares is, is basically e, is the EPS, which is 20 rupees. Now let us look at the stock market and let's see what the stock price is. We see that the stock price of this particular company, it is trading at rupees 510, okay? It is trading at 510 rupees. There is one more term that is used, which is called price by earning. Many a times we would have seen in Economic Times or many other business uh, financial newsletter, newspapers, oh, P is going up, P is coming down. What does it mean? Right? PE is nothing but the stock price divided by EPS divided by EPS. So what is that? So 510 divided by 20, which is 25.5. People say, everybody says, not people say, everybody says PE is an indicator of valuation, right? If the PE goes higher, we say, oh, it is overvalued. If the PE comes down, we say it is undervalued. But why do we say that? is important. Price by earning, if we do a reciprocal of that, it will become very easy to understand this concept. There is a concept which I look at it particularly is E by P, but not P by E. If I do EPS by price, that means what? 
for what is the stock price 510 510 is the price per share what is eps eps is the earning of the company per share that means what to by for earning 20 rupees i have to spend 510 rupees correct if i want to invest if i end up investing in this company i will earn 20 rupees per share if i spend 510 rupees e by p earning eps by price is 20 by 510 what does it mean 3.92 clear or is it slightly more complex chat box is it okay or is it slightly tough or do you want me to repeat chat box please is it okay not okay okay please repeat e by p okay perfect i have two three yes 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 one says please repeat e by p e by p is nothing but the ulta of p by e p by e was price patsudas divided by eps 25.5 but mereko i have to calculate e by p so i was looking at eps patsudas so i invested 510 rupees because let's look at it this way i want to calculate the valuation of the company and to figuring out why that company if that company is overvalued or undervalued what am i trying to find out so if i invest 510 rupees in that company i will get one share and one share of that company is earning 20 rupees because total number of shares 25 lakhs and the total earning of the company is 5 crore so by investing 510 rupees i am ending up earning 20 rupees so e by p is 20 by 510 so parts of thus pay 20 rupees so saw rupee pay 3.922 but if i invest if uh, people are saying repeat is it is it clear not clear yet e by p is earnings 3.92 yes no 3.92 is not the percentage increase in cheats uh, let, let's hold on to that what am i saying is that if i invest 510 i will get one share of the company and the earning from that one share of the company is 20 rupees so if that what is mon 510 rupees lagane se mere ko 20 rupees fayda hua to 100 rupees lagane pe kitna milega 510 pe 20 pull out your calculators and do it yourself 20 divided by 510 100 pe kitna agar if the value of the stock would have been 100 rupees i would have made 3.92 that is the earning percentage 510 ka worth is one share one share is price 510 one share is earning 20 rupees so 20 divided by 510 i am earning 3.92 this brings us to the end of the entire valuation discussion May 3.92 pay valuation pay tabhi lagaunga when everything else, when my when the FD rates are above 3.92 or below 3.92? In the chat box. When will I invest in a stock price like this? When I'm when my alternatives are earning more or earning less? In the chat box, please. If the rate is below, yes, absolutely. So the stock market valuations are determined by the interest rates. If tomorrow Reserve Bank of India cuts interest rates and E by P becomes higher than the FD rates in the system, in the, within the banking system, stock markets will boom, isn't it? Or look at a situation where, where Reserve Bank of India hikes the interest rates like we are in a situation where there is a slowdown but there is a high inflation so reserve bank of india is hiking interest rates so if interest rates go up okay e by p is lower than the interest rates money will move out of stock markets and come into bonds 
So that's why the entire stock market is what has been collapsing the last few months because the valuations have been becoming expensive. But expensive or cheap is relative to something and the relation, relative is to interest rates. Always remember, the market, the stock market becomes you know, expensive or cheap relative to interest rates. And interest rates, you're like a puppet in the hands of interest rates. Every asset market, asset markets go up and come down based on the amount of money that goes invested or disinvested. And money goes in or comes out of an asset depending upon interest rates. If interest rates are very high, nobody will leave a bank. If tomorrow SBI's FD rate is like 20%, do you think markets will, will boom? Answer is no. People will be happy investing in SBI FD. But tomorrow SBI's FD rates come down to 3%, 4%, 2% or something. People will start looking for an alternate. And that is how interest, uh, must, you know, other asset markets start to go. Perfect. All good. So with that, I come officially to the end of today's workshop. Uh, so there have been a few questions which has come to us. Is it okay? Everybody enjoyed? Nice? Okay, perfect. So there were a few questions about, let me just quickly. Okay. So, okay. Very informative. Okay. Okay, perfect. So, okay. So what I will do is now is, uh, so I'm going to spend maybe next five minutes or so uh, uh, talking about a couple of uh, programs that Uava also learns runs. Okay, and uh, so th there is one excellent program which is actually coming up beginning next month, which is called a Young Money Managers Program. Okay, I'm going to you know pull up some slides of that program. Just give me one second. Give me one second, please. Yes. So this is a program called Young Money Managers Program, which is beginning from 2nd of August. It is about a duration of one month. And uh, so this, this program is targeted to youngsters who, who want to take the first step into building your first portfolio. It is targeted to all high school students, college students, and so on. Uh, or for that matter, anybody who wants to make the first dabble with portfolios and so on. So there are quite a few interesting things that is going to be taught in this program. But uh, so this program will handhold you into the real world of money and markets and uh, help you in building sound investment principles and as you go about building your first uh, portfolio. So it starts off with the introduction into savings and investments, works into the wonders of compounding and how time and interest rates determine everything that is there in a portfolio management. So we will build from the very basic principles of portfolio granularity and build on those pillars of investment. Then look at how macros impact markets. Uh, then we will look at few asset classes, where to invest, <clears throat> look at equity, debt, importance of asset allocations, We'll work through mutual funds, types of mutual funds, how does one go about selecting mutual funds, and then would we'll build the first investment portfolio for yourself, how to go about and monitor investments and build your portfolios. So there is a question hand coming up. Yes, Suyog, what's your question, please? Sir, you explained uh, really awesome that connecting dots and uh, correlating with it uh, with a real life as we have seen uh, since COVID-19, what is the condition of our India? Because uh, by seeing the global leaders, Sri Lanka, Canada, also Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, Oman, and Russia, Ukraine war, and some Southeast countries are facing an inflation. Also, there is an, an, uh, a concept known as economic drought. So, as we are seeing the cri economic crisis happened uh, in the last month in Sri Lanka, it is a fresh uh, example to open an eyes to all the youngsters who are visiting this workshop 
uh, uh, because of your help uh, and we are going uh, uh, to the right way and we are also uh, getting the proper information so uh, as uh, as the money which we are earning could uh, uh, means will go to the perfect pathway and we can uh, could earn also uh, some money and also uh, uh, with the right uh, direction so with the help of you i really appreciate your uh, efforts you have taken for all uh, this um, for the past one hour you are te teaching us with a means like a, a lucid way and it means from a scratch uh, what is really thank you can economy is this what is 100 rupees uh, note so you have explained it, uh, it uh, with a better way because each and every one is having uh, an 100 rupees note so, but nobody sees it carefully but you have opened our, uh, my eye to how how to invest 100 rupees note with a perfect way okay. thank you thank you ali appreciate thank you very much thank you perfect so uh, so th this is a program that in case anybody is look is keen uh, can can talk to our academic counselors and uh, so, so there is a question. Yes, Anand. So the stock market investment is absolutely a focus area in the Young Money Managers program. So in the, if you see over here, so uh, we start, up, start off with equity as an asset class uh, and debt as an asset class. So these are two very important asset classes which are, which are part of the Young Money Managers program, clearly. So it is, it is, it is part of it. Okay. So, okay. One second. So let me just stop sharing. So there is one more program uh, which I wanted to talk to you about. So this is this is a continuation of the Young Money Managers program, which is called the Essentials of Money Management. Okay. So in the Essentials of Money Management, yes. So this is this is up on the screen now. In the Essentials of Money Management, it is also starting on the same time, second August next month. So what we do over here is a continuation. Uh, so over here, we just take you one step forward. So first one is that we double into uh, you know, asset markets, try and understand the equity and debt, particularly only these two asset classes. Look at mutual fund as an investment tool. Try and see how we build our first portfolio. Maybe build our first piggy bank portfolio at the end of the one month. But in this two-month program, we learn the basic skills of a money manager. And then help you know, work with each one of you individually to make you confident so that you may become the money manager of your family and friends, okay? Ultimately, you know, financial awareness, knowledge and literacy is extremely poor uh, and low, and that needs to be built upon. Because as we say, each one of us has to build our assets. While we are working towards earning money, we should work towards making our money grow as well. Not everybody will have the time or the inclination to do that, but if you of us learn this subject well, then it becomes so much more easier and life becomes so comfortable as we go on, okay? So this is the two-month program which where you learn the basic skills of a money manager and maybe end up becoming a money manager of your family and friends. It is designed to help you build a robust portfolio across all market cycles, okay? So over here, what you do in the second, in the second month is that you get into little more specifics about how to value a bond. Right. So in the first one, you will look at equities and so on. In the second one, you will start learning more about bonds and how to value a bonds, how to value an equity share, particularly. How do I meet? So there are two ways of making money. Either you maximize your returns or then you also minimize the risk. So while you're building portfolios to maximize the returns, how do I work around strategies around minimizing the portfolio risk as well? and then try and understand and include gold and other non-financial asset classes uh, when at what point in time it is relevant, important, reasonable, and so on. So building real estate and gold as part of your uh, portfolio, insurance and other wealth protection tools that are available, and then work around to build a comprehensive portfolio, uh, to how to build a portfolio, track a portfolio, rebalance a portfolio, and make appropriate changes at, at some point in time build a benchmark, track your performance against the benchmark. So all of those things are part of the two-month program. And the last one is called uh, the Advanced Program in Finance and Wealth Advisory. All right. So just a second. Let me share the screen. Yes, it's up on your screen. 
so this program is, is an advanced program in finance and wealth advisory, which is a three month program, okay? So over in this program, uh, we are looking for somebody uh, to win the classroom who is really serious to get into this field of wealth management as a career. Somebody uh, who, who wants to you know, get into the space and build a career because it, it is a very exciting space when you start managing, not just understanding money, not just understanding investments in portfolio management, but and not just building portfolio for yourself, but you're building portfolios for third party others as well. So it's a very lucrative career in itself. And uh, so this will equip you with the necessary knowledge and tools for a career as a financial advisor. So whether you want to start your own uh, entrepreneurial venture or you want to start working for a wealth management firm. So Uawa actually uh, works with each one of you to build your career as a financial advisor at the end of the three month program. So in the third month, so there are career options which are discussed, whether it's an employee or an entrepreneurial route, types of organizations to join, route to become an entrepreneur, career options. How do you build a financial plan for a client? How do you face and acquire a new and manage a client, real life client meeting interactions? How do you face job interviews and so on? So this is an absolutely career oriented program. It's a three month program uh, that we have built for somebody who wants to get into this. Uh, last but not the least, so we have one last program, and let me just take the opportunity to discuss all the programs here, is the, one second, what is the program? Okay, it is not on my, not on my desktop right now. So this is a six month program. So this is a long 150 hours program. So that is in collaboration with NAC Academy as well. Wawa and NSC Academy. Uh, that is targeted for somebody who wants to really go deep into this uh, world of finance, investments, wealth management, and absolutely, and, and, and uh, learn from the very basics. So start from the fundamentals of economics, business math, accounting, ethics, tons of soft skill, tons of soft skill, where, where ability to connect with individuals, how do you have a meaningful conversation how do you influence a conversation? How do you negotiate in a conversation? How do you present in a conversation? How do you interact with individuals? Because all of these soft skills really, really matter. So that six month program has 70% fundamental knowledge and 30% soft skill training. So all of that is part of the six month program, which is called a comprehensive program in wealth management. I'll just quickly maybe uh, open the website and you will be able to see that here. So, yes, so the first program is the program in wealth management, which is a six month program along with NSE Academy. This is a three month program we discussed. This is a two month program, Essentials of Money Management and uh, Young Money Managers. So you can always start off as part of the one month program and keep graduating depending upon the value that you derive from these programs. You can keep moving from one month to two months and three months and eventually into the six month program. The six month program is, the, is, is a full blown program with, with, which is along with NSE Academy, okay? Uh, <clears throat> so maybe I'm going to stop over here. And uh, what I want to do is that, so as UAWA along with NSE, so we are also conducting some financial awareness survey, okay? So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to paste a link on the chat box, okay? And maybe, mm, yes, I got it. Maybe just, just spend a few minutes. Uh, please help us in, in uh, filling in this details. Uh, please you know, participate in this financial awareness survey. So it would be wonderful. And uh, because we, we want to understand how, because right now, Uava, as you understand, maybe you have already seen on the website. So we are an academy, which is India's first uh, finance related focus ed tech firm. So we are on a mission because financial awareness is, is something that we need to build upon in our country. And we are all part of the industry and we have worked more than 25 
years in this industry, working with investors and wealth management and fund management teams and so on. So we, along with NSC, are trying to understand the level of financial awareness so that we can build appropriate programs to improve the level of awareness within the economy. So, so filling in these details in this financial uh, awareness survey is very important. Please take time to, time to do this. The second thing that I wanted to also understand how well the program went. So I want, uh, it's a request to each one of you, if you could fill in uh, a short feedback, okay, about, about the program. Just a sec, yes. So, so both the links I have pasted uh, in the chat box. So the first one is the financial survey. Uh, so there are both of them are same. I think uh, somebody from Oawa has has pasted it again. So one, the form is the feedback form. Uh, please take time to fill up the feedback form. It will help us to improve uh, and deliver better programs. We we uh, we would also request you to uh, you know spread the word about these free workshops that we are conducting. Each one of you who have participated in this workshop would be receiving a digital certificate uh, from Oawa which you can use and uh, uh, you know, post on your social media, wherever, in whichever format you want to, because you have completed this program that, that gives us enough reason to award you that, uh, you know, the certificate. So you can use it in the format that you would like. Uh, the second thing is that we would also, uh, we would also want you to spread the word that Wawa is also conducting these free workshops for, for every learner in India. So we, there was one more program coming up uh, on similar lines on Thursday, then there is one more on Friday. So we almost have these workshops happening every second day. Uh, so almost three, four times every week. So please spread the word amongst your friends and community and encourage them to come. If you have found value in today's uh, you know, workshop and uh, you know, depending upon your feedback, we would look forward to keep improving on what we are doing. All right, so kindly send the PDF all the courses in our email ID. Absolutely, Suyo. So we will do that. Uh, great. Any any last comments from anybody before we sign off? Uh, sir, uh, I have gone through the website uh, uh, the before four days ago, and I have seen there there is a uh, course which you explained right now that six month course which take a deep dive in the each and every segment so uh, if uh, the particular students who is not interested in doing one month or two month course can he directly take an admission for the six month course because uh, the syllabus is correlated with uh, the first and second uh, uh, means for first uh, means one month course and second month course so absolutely so it is not necessary that one has to go through the one month two month and three month to get into the six month program six month program is a completely a hardcore program uh, who wants to seriously uh, look forward and build a career in wealth advisory uh, with all seriousness so that program will start somewhere in the month of november okay and uh, please stay connected so uh, you, you can really start off with the six month program as well you don't need to go through it, the one month, two month, three month. Sir, last question. Kindly uh, put uh, down the numbers of education counselors so we could join them and they would also take a note from us that uh, some students are also interested for the six month course so they can uh, call us on the month of November when the course will start. Sure, sure. So I think your details would be there in our registration link. Uh, uh, so you asked for the phone number of the admission counselor or i didn't get that what did you ask for yes, yes phone numbers okay yeah I mean, actually will you be uh, writing that on the chat box please sure sure um so uh so York, the best way is to always just check the website uh in case we ever update our number you will always find the updated number on the website I'll post uh, the number that we have right now i'm posting that you can reach any of our academic counselors uh, with this number.
8080-4680-0970. It's a hunting line. One of the academic counselors will pick it up. Okay, thanks. Super. All the very best, guys. Thank you so much. And uh, hope to see you or your friends in one of our future. Uh, and we strongly urge you guys to, you know, spread the word about this free workshop amongst your friends and community. We would look forward to a you know, larger group. So this time it was a fantastic, very interactive. Thank you very much. Congratulations to each one of you. And the workshop certificate, yes, Praveen, workshop certificates will come your way. Uh, you should expect it by latest by Thursday in, in your email box. If it doesn't come in, please give us a call. If for some technical reason it doesn't reach you, or maybe because of incorrect email ID or something, please ensure that you call up this number 0804680970 by Thursday if you have not received it by then. All right. Sir, last, sir, last question. The certificate we will, which would uh, the, means you would give to us, Miss by UA uh, and NSC, means for I'm talking about six months. So that will be for lifetime, or we should uh, renew it. That's for lifetime. Okay, sir. Thanks. This workshop certificate will be from OAVA. The, all the program work, uh, certificates, the six month will be joint certificates. All right. Super. Thank you very much. All the very best. Have a great evening. We'll sign off now. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.